All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we're going to be doing another little mod video uh, that's uh, science E, but not entirely. So, <laughs> I actually started a new sandbox level for this because uh, not all of the mod is quite yet... Well, it's actually technically three separate mods slash ships, which you can probably guess what they're for from the name of the sandbox. Oh, but yes, uh, it is Star Trek Ships. A uh, particular user on the forums and a poster on the spaceport for Kerbal Space Program has put together three very famous ships from the Star Trek franchise. Now, we've... <laughs> oh, we already have them in space at the moment because I, I wanted to try flying with them. And you may notice there are four ships. I'll, I'll explain that in a, in a little bit. But, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go and look at them in the VAB first, and we'll look at them out here in the wild. <laughs> but yes, unfortunately, out of the three ships, only one of them is fully updated for the .22 update. The other two are still stuck back in .21, but they still work. But because they don't have the science integration, I just wanted to start with Sandbox. Uh, but yes, the one that does in fact work with point two two integrated with science, though dear god would it be very very cheaty to use it in your career science mode, is the original Enterprise. Full size. It is one to one of <laughs> what it should be for the Star Trek Enterprise, the uh, for, from the original series, and you can see all there, all the, all of that wonderful, wonderful goodness, manufacturer Starfleet, all the fun and adventure of the Enterprise in one part, no assembly required, and yeah, that is it. You just plop this thing down in the VAB, and yeah, you have a fully functional Starship Enterprise. As you can see, it runs on a lot of electrical charge, and it produces its own electrical charge as well. Generator is always active, and it produces a thousand per second, uh, I believe is what that means on there. And uses xenon gas for its propulsion method. And yeah, the whole thing is insane, absolutely insane. It has a crew capacity of eight, and the best part of all, it has an IVA view. Ah, uh, yes. You can have the Star Trek Enterprise and actually sit in the captain's chair. So if we click this thing into the VAB, as you can see, it is just bloody massive. Uh, there is no way you can really do anything in the VAB with this uh, whole ship. I mean, just uh, just look at it. It's, <laughs> it's huge. It's just bursting through the walls. Uh, but yes, yes, that is that is the original Enterprise. Let's go new real quick, and we'll do the Enterprise D next. Now, I, I have actually had a little trouble with the Enterprise D. If we click it, it is in two parts. You have the hull, and you also have the saucer section. And you can grab the saucer section, and let's zoom out more, go up. You can grab the saucer section and attach it to the Enterprise D hull. But when you try and take off, the saucer section keeps ripping off of the ship during launch. I, I don't know why, but it does. So it's uh, that's that's why we have four ships in the up in space right now that you saw in the tracking station. Because I had to launch these two separately, because they are independent ships, just like they are in the next generation. You have the uh, the hole being commanded from the battle bridge, and then you have the saucer section, which can, you know, separate away and take all the civilians to safety. Uh, it's good times, but yes, connecting them together, even though you can, it just it just seems to rip itself apart. I I don't know why. I've seen pictures of it in orbit, all together. So I I don't know if I'm just doing something wrong, but nonetheless, it can fly in two parts. So I flew it in two parts. And again, if we look at these things, Starfleet, uh, for the main hull the, of the Enterprise D, it powers the vessel and can detach from the saucer in emergencies, which happens often. And again, we have a large crew capacity, a lot of electrical charge, all that sort of stuff. Uses xenon gas again. And a crew capacity this time of four for the hull, 
and then the saucer section, you have another four crew capacity. And yeah, it's a very, very impressive ship. But unfortunately, it does not have an internal view. There is no IVA view. It actually uses the habitation module for its internal view, which is kind of strange. Uh, but hopefully in time it will come. I, I do believe actually the guy's working. I could have sworn that I saw in a thread somewhere that he was working on the internal view for it. But, yes, that is the Enterprise-D. But, of course, good old Picard had to start somewhere. He didn't start on the Enterprise. Uh, one of it, you know, the ship he had previously was the Stargazer. So we have the Stargazer on here as well. And this is the main section of the Stargazer. It provides power to the engines and also includes thrusters for atmospheric missions. And, again... Xenon gas, whole lot of power, blah, blah, blah. Crew capacity six on this one. And the Stargazer does have an internal view. So as far as the internal view goes, we have them on the original Enterprise and the Stargazer. And if we put the Stargazer up, this one we actually have to work with a bit. So if we grab it and scroll up and then zoom out so we can see things. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> go down uh, in the engine section there is actually the stargazer nacelles and so you do have to attach them onto this sh vessel which is good you know it's quite cool that you have that and well, let's rotate these around there we go now there's two nacelles here I figured one was the top and one was the bottom because that was the design of the stargazer but these ones are uh, they do they don't seem to work for me when I click them they it's a little wonky. Um, that might just be my download, perhaps. I tried downloading it again, and I had the same issue. But it might be because this is one of the ships designed for point two one, and I'm in point two two. So I don't know. Maybe that's messing around with something. But nonetheless, we have the Stargazer here, and it does have an internal view. But that's enough of looking at the VAB. Let's actually take a look at these things in space. They are... They are glorious. All right, let's go to the tracking station, and we'll start with the Enterprise, the original Enterprise, and all of its beauty. Now you notice on this one, we've got sounds. We've got the wonderful scanning sounds from the original series, and yeah, it's this thing is massive. As you saw when we came in, it was all the way zoomed in here, so you gotta bring it out, and it is just huge. And this one like I said, is integrated with the science system. So if we right click, you can see we can do a captain's log, scan the area, and transmit data. And now here's the thing though, and why this is very, very cheaty, and if you actually use this for your science, you're kinda, well, you're, you're cheating, I'm sorry, but you are. <laughs> you scan area, uh, of course we're not gonna get anything because we're in sandbox, but that's 1000% science value to transmit anything. Normally that's like 50% or something like that because you get transmit loss. This thing actually seems to amplify it. And I, I did actually briefly try it in a new career mode that I started up. And I got, I don't remember exactly how much, but I flew around the planet in the atmosphere and got hundreds of science for just scanning in the atmosphere doing this. It was quite impressive. And then of course we've got the captain's logs as well. Though we don't have anything in it because we are in sandbox. But yes, they are all integrated in with the science system for this, and it has its own unique things here. Like one of the scans I got uh, from the scan area was talking about finding tritium. It's like, oh, that's wonderful. So <laughs> it's very cool, very awesome. And of course, let's go to Jebediah, who is sitting in the captain's seat. And just, oh, look at this beautiful, beautiful bridge that they made for this ship. It's just, it's gorgeous. And you actually still have all of your visible controls. You can see Bill and Bob there have those gauges. Got the nav ball. Got all of your command switches over here. It is just glorious. And of course, double click on the view screen. Bring up Kerbin. Increase zoom. There we go. Bring it in. Ah, oh, it's wonderful. I just, I get such a kick out of this ship. It's just so much fun to have this. But if we head back out and go to the map, we should be able to go to the Stargazer, which I believe, yes, is that one. 
we'll switch to the Stargazer. Oh, there we go. Ah, look at it in all of its glory. It's just, it's beautiful. And I, I love all the detail on it. Even got the, you know, the uh, ship number and all that going for it. It is quite awesome. And this one, like I said, also does have an IVA. So if we go to Lowball Kerman, who apparently is commanding the Stargazer, and zoom out of this, this one is a bit more sparse. Uh, but yes, we do have a full crew complement here on the bridge. <laughs> and once again, all working functional controls there with those guys at the con. And oh, actually, I didn't notice that up there. Is that the... Oh, I didn't notice that the orbital uh, speed is right there. And of course, just like on the other, we can double click on that view screen. And that's the cool thing on this one. It brings the view backwards on you. Oh, look at Lowball. He's so happy dancing around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is pretty awesome. Who is flying this thing? He does not look very happy. You are. You are piloting the Stargazer. Be happy. <laughs> uh, but yes, this thing is just absolutely wonderful. Very, very cool. So let's go now. Oop, why is it not opening the map? There we go. I was hitting N rather than M. <laughs> and let's go to the Enterprise D, which is the hull section. We switch to that, and yep, oh, we are, we are in an odd direction, okay, kind of upside down, but <laughs> there we go, uh, there we go, we have the Enterprise D, the hull section here, which is, you know, independent, and like I said, the IVA on this one is the habitation module, but if you click on the window, you can actually see the nacelle outside, so... Hopefully they will have this functioning at some point in the future. I, I'm sure that they're working on it, and I cannot wait to see it once they do have it made. I mean, that'll just be amazing to have the Enterprise D it just, you know, have the IVA view as well as being able to fly it. So, oop, I didn't mean to hit that. Let's go back out to C. And go to the saucer section, which, uh, there we go. Oop, switch to... Oh, we are inside of it, zooming out. <laughs> very, very alien, this one looks, of course, without the hull section. And once again, as you can see down there, they have the uh, habitation module internal. Though, what do we see out here? Oh, it's clipping through. <laughs> right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, look at them. They're so happy on this mission. All nice and comfy in the saucer section of the Enterprise. <laughs> but yes, these things are quite amazing, not only in their design, but also in their function. Let's actually go back to the Enterprise. And they are just amazing vessels, extraordinarily quick. I mean, when I took them off from the launch pad, I only throttled up to the first notch. That was it, and we could get into orbit. And it's actually pretty amazing. Let's uh, angle this thing around. One thing to note, it is completely uncontrollable without the SAS on. If you have the SAS off, this thing just starts rolling all over the place. It's it's kind of crazy. But yeah, if we face that direction and throttle up a bit, let's go to full throttle, actually. And we're moving quite quickly, as you can tell. Planet's starting to come you know, very, very close to us, and it'll start going away. But as you already see from our trajectory... We're now going at, oh my god, look at how fast we're going. <laughs> we aren't just leaving Kerbin at the moment, we are actually leaving the solar system. So this thing, besides being, you know, extraordinarily cheaty science-wise, it's also extraordinarily cheaty in the sense of this thing is just so, so fast. Uh, let's actually bring it down, set Minmus is our target. Let's see if we can perhaps get around it. Just point ourselves right at Minmus. Alrighty. And full throttle. Let's roll. Oh god, look at the G-forces. <laughs> oh, I love the sounds too. You've got... And I like that they're in the map as well. It, it, it entertains me greatly. But yeah, this thing is just crazy. I mean, we are going extraordinarily fast. And there goes Kerbin in the background. 
Where is Minmus? Oh god, see, even with SAS on, this thing moves around a whole lot. It's it's a wonderful ship, but dear lord, is it is it difficult to control. Let's actually try and uh, bring down our speed now. Let's go to the periapsis burn point, or the retrograde point, whatever you want to call it. And, okay, getting there. We are going to fly by Minmus at this rate. <laughs> Oh, jeez, it's right there, really? Wow. Okay, okay. Whoa, no, 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 Come back. Ah, like I said, even with the SAS, this thing is extraordinarily hard to control. Just because it's it's just so fast. Just so, so fast. Let's just throttle up and start to try and bring it down. Yeah, right now... Yeah, we are we are leaving the solar system and fast. Oh my god, look at that speed. That was a half a million meters per second. <laughs> oh my god, we're already way past Minmus. I should have been doing this way sooner. <laughs> yeah, these things are extraordinarily difficult to control, but they are just so, so wonderful and very, very cool to actually have. Oh, God. Okay, okay. It's coming down. It's coming down. What are we actually going to be orbiting around now? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah, you can get a whole lot of science with this thing. I still can't believe it's actually integrated in with the science system, though. That's just impressive. Yeah, the whole scan area and captain's log. Very well thought out. Very cool. Oh, God. Where are we going? Oh, it's so hard to control. Ah... How did Kirk fly this thing? Okay, okay. Oh no, we need to keep we need to keep doing that. Oh right, there we are. We Oh my god, are we actually going to be what are we going to be orbiting? Oh, I have no clue. But <laughs> yeah, we're free floating in the solar system now, slightly out of control on yet another mission for the Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, this is just a gloriously fun mod. I will, of course, put a uh, link to all three of the ships in the description. They're very easy to find on the spaceport. If you just go to the Kerbal Spaceport site, all you got to do is type in Star Trek, and these three come up. It's it's just wonderful. They are, well, beautifully made ships, especially with the internal view. I mean, just... Uh, it's, oh, no, wait, wait, no. I turned off the HUD. There we go. I meant to do this. Yeah, it's, it's just... It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful and just so amazing. You guys got to check this out and see them for yourself. And maybe you can control them better than I can. Because they are... They are wily ships, to be sure. But yes, that is going to be it for this episode. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you come back for the next... Uh, where we'll probably be back to the career mode. But until then, uh, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always, have a good one. <laughs>